another thing, again, I have no science background, but I did hear that trees and forests were a, a source of oxygen. And not only are they a source of oxygen, when you, David Montgomery spoke uh, twice and he spoke about the soil and he was saying, if I understood it, that when you knock the forest down, well now the soil is much more vulnerable to erosion because of the wind and the rain. But even though deforestation and desertification are very big concerns, um, if the animals are in a, you know, you know, an area, they, have, they don't seem like they really have anything to do with the forest or causing desert. So why would a bunch of cows in, you know, in a field have anything to do with deforestation or desertification? <laughs> All right. So, you know, we have cut down so many forests, I mean, uh, in, in North America, and we're continuing to do that. We're, we uh, are, are cutting down, um, as I mentioned this morning, the statistics are, are very sad. We, in the Amazon, according to what I've read recently, it's about an acre per second of Amazonian rainforest is being cut down. And so we have these, you know, giant machines that can really clear land very quickly. Uh, the demand for soy uh, to feed uh, pigs, cows, chickens, and factory farm fish. People, most people don't realize that factory farm fish eat a lot of corn and soy, tilapia and trout and catfish and other fish that are either f eat fed to cows or pigs or chickens or fed to other factory farm fish like salmon or tuna and, or fed to people. You know, so it's this whole feeding of animals to each other that's um, very perverse, but also concentrates toxins all the way up the food chain. Uh, but it's cutting down these forests at a completely, uh, I wouldn't just say unsustainable rate, I would say it's insane. It's like, you know, it's idiotic. It's like sitting, standing on a limb and cutting it off your own, <laughs> the limb you're, you're sitting on, you know. And uh, we're doing that, and, um, and, and, and we're contributing. I mean, the, the, you know, a, a lot of the, of the cutting down of rainforests, for example, in the Amazon is being driven by the demand for soy in China, but it's also the demand for soy in the United States uh, as well as Europe. Uh, for, for, as well as South America too. So it's, you know, it's, the whole system is very globalized at this point and we're growing right now, for example, in, 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 the United, in California, we're, we're exporting huge amounts of alfalfa to China, you know, and people are yelling about that because of, you know, we don't have the water to, to do that. But economically, some people, somebody's getting uh, benefit from that. So uh, the forests are essentially uh, are, uh, for the most part in North America are gone. I mean, they're in the, the, um, the land that can be used for agriculture at this point or for housing or for city, you know, cities and so forth has been, for the most part, used except for some national and state parks. And uh, so this represents really in many ways uh, one of the driving forces behind the loss of genetic diversity. We're losing habitat basically continuously. As I said this morning, animal agriculture is a war against uh, the, the natural world, we, uh, we want to get rid of the forest, we want to have monocrop culture, we want to have just one thing growing there for growing animal foods, and, any, and all the other animals uh, that would normally live in forests are seen as enemies that might harm my property, my profits. It's all about money, unfortunately. It boils down to profits, and uh, industries are built on this. And at, at every level, there's profits to be made uh, by people cutting down forests, there's profits to be made. Also, indigenous cultures, I think, are a very important uh, resource for us for, heal, for understanding about healing herbs and medicines, as well as language, as well as just their wisdom. Uh, but they're also being destroyed by animal agriculture. Uh, anyone, there's so many people have been murdered in the Amazon for trying to defend um, their tribal ways in, in, in uh, Ecuador and Peru and Brazil and Colombia and um, so you know the, the, the ranching industry from the very beginning the, the Indians here face the same thing you know when people come when when ranchers come anyone who's doing animal who's trying to do a plant agriculture pretty much historically has been killed and their and their and their gardens have been destroyed and the forests have been cut down and the wealthy uh, ranchers then begin a, a war against nature and against other rival uh, ranchers and it's livestock uh, that really is at a war with wildlife and the forest uh, inevitably get cut down and uh, when, when, in cutting down these ancient forests this is not like just cutting down tree farms these are incredibly complex beautiful 
spectacular celebrations of life that took millions of years to develop and have species we don't even know what the, who the species are and they're going extinct and uh, it, it's it's just completely uh, unthinkable that we would be doing this and yet we're just doing it as business as usual again there's no media coverage of it to speak of uh, and uh, when we take out our wallets and paying for it we're causing it to happen essentially so uh, I think we have to really make the connections between animal agriculture and the destruction of forests and the diversity that, that planet Earth uh, really is based on, uh, on forests. And I would add that when we cut down trees, not only do we create problems with diversity and extinction of species, not only do we create areas that are more susceptible to erosion and the kind of problems that David Montgomery talked about earlier, but we also speed the pace of climate change because trees both sequester carbon and con convert CO2 to oxygen. The, the Amazon, uh, Amazonian rainforest is responsible for 20% of the planet's oxygen supply. So as we, as we chop down that rainforest, we change the balance of oxygen and CO2 in the atmosphere, and we're, we're speeding climate change in that way as well. Um, just some stats to add, because uh, they really covered this pretty well, but just to throw some things out. Um, uh, the UN has found that cattle ranching is now the primary reason for deforestation in the Amazon. And, you know, here in America, large-scale dietary change to a plant-based diet could actually reverse deforestation. Um, we use so much land here in the U.S not only for the pasture and rangeland for the animals, but also to grow the grain that's going to feed those animals. Uh, over 400 million acres is pasture and rangeland. That could all be reforested if we had a, 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 a countrywide shift to a plant-based diet. Uh, and then hundreds of, of a millions of additional acres is going to grow the feed that feed those animals. So all that land could be reforested, uh, you know, we could bring back the forest, bring back uh, the wild areas, have them be sequestering, sequestering carbon uh, and, and help to reverse climate change. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it's really amazing what could happen. Um, so, uh, and you know, and, and just a little something about uh, loss of species and biodiversity, it's really so connected and people don't realize, you know, when we think about animals being listed as threatened or endangered on the, you know, federal and endangered species list, uh, we're often thinking of human encroachment and parking lots and stuff like that. Well, the majority of the reason for a lot, in a lot of cases, um, for these animals being listed is livestock. Uh, uh, so uh, about 20% um, of our usable land right now is, is used for habitat uh, for the um, livestock, which was once for wildlife. Uh, globally, livestock production, and this is interesting, this is from the EPA. The EPA is saying, and this is where I got these, this information, globally, livestock production is one of the leading causal factors in the loss of biodiversity and a key factor in loss of species and within certain regions of the U.S. livestock grazing is listed as the number one cause for species being federally listed as threatened or endangered. So this is a, a real concern for wildlife and livestock exclusion, getting the cows out of the streams and out of sensitive areas um, is, is really seen as, as a, a way to dramatically and rapidly uh, uh, repair the earth and that area. Um, and predator control is another one too. I'll, I'll just throw it out there. I know we've talked about this a lot, but I, I think this is important and we'll touched on it a little, but there is uh, actually, so, so ranchers, you know, they see predators, coyotes, bobcats, whatever's in their area as a threat to their livestock. And uh, they will set out traps and poisons and shoot animals. There's actually a government uh, uh, entity called, it used to be called Animal Damage Control, and that was a, a more um, accurate name. They are now Wildlife Services that you can basically call and a rancher can call and say, hey, I saw a coyote and they'll come out and they will set you know, poisons, traps, uh, shoot. They do aerial shooting of, of animals from helicopters. Uh, they are just, it's just a war on wildlife. They kill millions 
of animals uh, yearly for, lot, for ranchers. Uh, and, you know, and poisons and traps are, of course, indiscriminate. We've got other non-target species that are, are, are being trapped and dying of horrible, uh, you know, it's just an absolutely horrible way to die, to get caught in these traps. The poisons, you know, mother, a mother fox can take the poison uh, back to her babies in the den and, 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 and they all die in the den. I mean, it's just horrible. And this is all because of our animal agriculture.